At the conclusion of every round of oyster gardening, live oysters grown through the program are used to build and populate new oyster reefs at locations across Brevard County. Here's how it works. Reef building sites are selected in part using the oyster success and survivability data collected by our oyster gardeners. Once a site is picked out, our first main goal is to lay the base layer of the reefs that will be populated by the live oysters returned by oyster gardeners. To do this, we'll first need to carry bags of blank shell out to the marked reef sites. We'll be placing these shell bags on the estuary floor perpendicular to the shore in two long rows of 12. This will form the base of the new oyster reef. At some reef sites, we may also build a small set of experimental reefs using oyster mats. This helps us to test and utilize any natural recruitment of oyster larvae that may already be in the area. When it's time for oyster gardeners to return the live oysters they've grown, they will bring them to a special oyster collection event at the site of the new reef. At this time, some gardeners will also be returning supplies, which we will sort into piles. Gardeners will then bring their oysters to us in coolers or trash bags. We'll dump these oysters out onto a tarp, at which point the gardener is free to go. We will then have a team of volunteers separating out a random selection of live oysters from the pile on the tarp and placing them into buckets. Live oysters can be identified by their sharp scalloped edges jutting out from the base shell, as you'll see in this example. Another way to identify oysters is by their dark striations, which these examples show. Once a random selection of live oysters is sorted into buckets, those buckets of oysters will be handed off to a team of UCF researchers who will be measuring, weighing, and recording data on the oysters. Once the data is recorded, 50 measured oysters at a time will be placed into special scientifically monitored shell bags, along with a mixture of blank shell. These bags will receive special numbered tags to help scientists keep track of them. Back on the oyster tarp, the remaining oysters and shells returned by gardeners that are not separated out for study purposes will simply be bagged for placement on the reefs. Shell bagging involves sliding a mesh bag knotted on one end over a tube, filling a bucket with shells, and then pouring those shells into the tube. Once all the shells from the bucket are inside the tube, you can remove the tube and tie the open end of the bag as close to the top as possible. Both the regular shell bags and numbered scientifically monitored bags will then need to be placed onto the reefs. We will carry all the bags out to the marked reef sites, and then 12 monitored bags will be placed on top of the base layer of bags on the seaward row of the reef. An additional 12 regular non-monitored bags will be placed on top of the base layer on the landward row of the reef to complete construction. The last step will be securing the reef by zip tying the ends of all bags together, both on the outside edge of the reef and in the middle between the two rows. Each bag should be zip tied to its nearest neighbors on the top, bottom, and sides. After that, we sit back and celebrate a job well done. Each oyster we put back into the lagoon will clean up to 50 gallons of water per day through filter feeding, which is a big step toward naturally restoring our local estuary.